Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sky, and today we are doing an old school brand review on Alter Ego. So Alter Ego very kindly sent me a PR package and I thought, right, let's test this stuff out. Excuse me, just ruined the bit. Now I have used these products for about a month straight now and I know them very, very well. I mean, I'll just show you how many pages of notes I made. Like, I very thoroughly reviewed this stuff. We have eight and a half pages of notes to go through, so strap yourselves in. Also, Alter Ego did send me these products in PR, but they're not paying me to make this video, all opinions on my own, all of that stuff. I will say, however, the only thing that I didn't super thoroughly test out are the false lashes. I've only worn these twice, full disclaimer, but I'll get to those at the end. So the goodies we are going to be reviewing today include their eyeshadow base, their matte liquid lipstick formula, their lashes, and the stars of the show, two palettes. So the first palette is the Midsummer palette. This is their newest palette. And then we also have the Coastal palette, which looks like this. Now, Alter Ego, if you don't know, they're a brand that tends to do like dupes of other like big high-end luxury makeup. I used to feel a bit iffy about brands duping others, but I find that if they're duping like a really expensive brand like Natasha Denona or like Pat McGrath or something, to me, I'm like, yeah, that's fine nowadays. But if they try and dupe an indie brand like directly, like, you know, directly copy an indie brand, that's when I'm like, mm, maybe don't do that. But I feel like high-end brands are on the table because let's be honest, in this cozy living crisis, it's nice to have some cheaper options. But yeah, let's get into it. We're first gonna talk about the eyeshadow base. Let me use a candle as a paperweight because I need to look at these notes. Now, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you would know that I have oily hooded lids and the only eyeshadow primer that ever touches my eyes for years and years, it's probably been about like five years now? Five years? Yeah five years now, is the Milani eyeshadow primer. This is my holy grail. This is my go-to. I have gone through countless tubes of this. So this had to, a lot to live up to. So let's start off with the packaging first. It has a doe foot applicator right here, which makes it really easy to just apply on your lids. It is a very, very thin liquidy formula. Don't know if you can really see that. And it applies as a rosy beige color, but then when you like blend it out, it just blends into nothing. Once it dries down, it is very, very smooth feeling. Very like, feels like silicone almost. I don't know if it is silicone based. I should have probably checked. Now compared to the Milani eyeshadow primer, to the touch, it's not as tacky. Milani has a little bit more like stick to it, but this does wear really well on my oily hooded lids. Like I don't find eyeshadows crease or fade. It retails for seven US dollars, which is about five pounds 44, which is actually cheaper than Milani in the UK. I don't know if it's cheaper than Milani in the US, but it's cheaper than Milani in the UK. However, the trade-off of that is it's not as accessible internationally. You do have to pay international shipping, but overall, I really do like this primer. Do I prefer it to Milani though? Now, while I do really like it, I prefer the slightly extra tackiness that the Milani has. I think that eyeshadow blends a bit smoother on top of it and like grips a bit better. For um, an example, on one eye each, I used the different primers. On this eye, I used the Alter Ego eyeshadow primer. And then this eye, I used Milani. Now, I'll zoom you in real close so you can see. Also this eye look, I used all Alter Ego, so. We'll get to the eye look later, but it's really pretty. I really like it. So this is Alter Ego's eyeshadow base on this side, and then this eye is Milani. Now, I don't think there's really much of a difference, to be honest. I think I just prefer Milani for the slight tackiness. But that being said, I am not mad at this eyeshadow base. It's actually really, really good. It's the closest that I've found um, to the Milani eye primer. Uh, the only other dupe that I know of is the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer, but like I ain't paying like 20 quid for an eye primer. Nah. <laughs> if you didn't have the Milani eye primer to compare to and you want to try a new primer, I really do recommend this and it's quite cheap. Like I'm, I'm a big fan. I did make a note of this as well. I was worried that their international shipping was going to be quite expensive, but at least their international shipping to the UK is only 13.99 US dollars. Let's just say $14, which is £10.88. Let's just round it up to 11 So honestly, they're 
UK shipping's pretty cheap. I was quite surprised. I can't comment on their shipping like times and if you get customs or not because I got these in PR so I'm not too sure but if you've bought from Alter Ego before and you live in the EU or UK do let us know like your experience shipping. But now let's get on to the main events. The eyeshadow palettes. We're starting off with Midsummer right here. I really like the packaging of their products. Like it's like this kind of like really silky, not silky, but it's a really nice, it feels good in your hands. I don't know how else to describe it. The design carries on over on the back and there's a bit of information on the palette there. It's kind of hard to see on camera. And this is what it looks like on the inside. You do get a mirror and it has a magnetic closure. It is a 12 pan palette with five mattes and seven shimmers. Now of those seven shimmers, three of them are smooth metallics, two are satins, and two are sparklier shimmers. I'll get into the shimmer breakdown a bit later on, but that is, you know, the main info. And this palette also retails for 18 US dollars or 14 pounds. And like I mentioned, they are a brand that dupes other color stories. And I did not know what color story this was trying to dupe. I think, I'm pretty sure it's an Anastasia Beverly Hills one. I think it's the Nouveau one. I think, I'm not too sure. I honestly don't keep up with Anastasia, so. That sounds like she's my mate. I don't keep up with Anastasia. I don't know. I don't know what she's doing. But anyways, let's talk about the matte formula. And also, if you see me glancing down, I am referring to the intense pages of notes. It's almost like a script, but like I needed to keep my brain on track. This matte formula is really silky to the touch, and it is very smooth and buildable. It's not super pigmented right off the bat. It's not like Blend Bunny or Gleminatrix, where you dip your brush in, you put on your eye, and you're like, whoa, pigment. Shroud's formula is also the same as that. No. No, this is definitely more buildable. It reminds me a lot of Geology's eyeshadow formula, like their mattes. And I think that sort of formula is really good if you're a beginner. Now the only shade of all these mattes that I had issues with is this one right here called Meadow. In the pan it looks more like an olive green, but on my eyes it kind of just... It looks really grey, like a grey with a green undertone and a bit of brown to it. Now that might be because I do have an olive undertone and it might just, you know, the undertones just match too well and it just looks a bit weird on my eyes. I'm not too sure, but I was a bit sad. I also found that this shade had issues layering, like the other mattes were fine if you layered them, but this one... It, it would look a bit patchy and it's a bit hard to work with. You can get there, but you do have to fiddle with it, which makes me sad because I really do like this sort of like olivey shade. Now their matte formula is quite powdery, not super outrageously powdery, but they are powdery and they do have fallout. It is the type of fallout that you can just whisk away. You don't have to worry about it like sticking to your base. Although if you do have like a dewy base, um, you might want to do your eyes first. Now I will say if I could change something about this palette, I would change this shade Vanilla. It is actually like the most pigmented matte in the palette, which is weird because it's a beige. I would change this shade for another green or like a purple. Mm, actually no, I would change it for a green because it's just... I just don't like beige mattes in palettes. I just think they make palettes a bit limiting for more skin tones because, I mean, this shade's only gonna work for people with lighter skin, let's be honest. Unless you want to have like a super bright lid, like for an all matte look, but even then, I don't know. This could have been a fun shade, a fun green. I also think that this shade Lavender, I'm actually wearing this like on the inner portion of my crease. This shade Lavender, while it is really pretty, I think it's a bit out of place. I know this palette is a dupe of like another palette, but this, it just feels like it shouldn't be there. Like, I don't know. I know it's a pop of color, but it just, it looks, I, it looks weird. <laughs> kind of clashes with all the other colors. Like it doesn't quite mesh well because it has a cool undertone and everything else is warm. Now let's talk about the different shimmer formulas in this palette. We're first gonna talk about the smooth metallics. Now the shades that I found to be the smooth metallics were Camp, Dew and Glare. This is quite a thick formula to the touch. It's very smooth, like a very smooth finish. And it reminds me a lot of the Shroud Shimmer formula from their Arcana palette and their earlier palettes. Um, it's very thick. There's not that much shine to it, but there is like a enough to call it a metallic. There's not many like multi-dimensional sparkles in it. Um, which are the types of shadows that I prefer. Um, but I will say that the shade Glare 
it's quite disappointing. It feels a lot thinner to the touch and it just doesn't like to stick well to the eye. Even if I put like a tacky base like the Ferronet Pixie Epoxy or NYX Glitter Primer, it just does not stick. Now I do use glitter primers to get the metallics to shine a bit more, but I find that if you layer a little bit too much shadow on top of the glitter primer, these can look quite thick and chunky on the eyes, so you do have to be a bit careful with that. But if you smooth them out with a thin layer, and even if you just want to apply them all over your lid as like a one and done shadow look, they look really nice. Like I actually really like this shade Camp. Like I have used it for like a one and done look when I've been testing out this palette. And those shimmers wear really well except for glare. Glare is my enemy. The next formula we're going to talk about are the satin shades which are Tempest and Twilight. Now, I personally don't like satin shades in the slightest. <laughs> they're just not my thing. They don't have enough shine. They're not for me. But I tried to put those opinions aside when I tried to review this. <laughs> Tempest is shinier out of the two metallics and it does have a nice like blue duochrome to it. It's quite subtle, but it is nice. I did do a look where I did like a shadow liner using Tempest as like the only thing on my eye. And I'll put a picture of it right here. I actually really liked how this look came out. It was really, really pretty. <laughs> they apply very smoothly on your eyes and they do have a thick texture and they do wear really well. I would personally use these satins as like layering shades. They do like create a good base, especially because they have such a strong base color to them. They're really nice if you want to put them on your lid and then layer something else on top. That's probably how I would get the most use out of them. Although I did like Tempest as that shadow liner. I might recreate that look. Now the last shades in the palette are their sparklier shimmers. So those are Pollen and Festival. The base color to these is quite strong and they are my favorite shimmers in the palette because of course are the most sparkly. <laughs> Pollen is a very brown toned olive with like silver and light green sparkles and Festival is the showstopper of the palette. This one has a rose base with like silver, blue and light green sparkles to it. It is absolutely stunning. This formula is a bit of a thicker texture but not as thick as the Smooth Metallic formula. They really pop with a glitter primer and they do wear really well but I do find that sometimes I do have a little bit of glitter fallout on my cheeks, very slight, not much at all. And they are really pretty. Like I would see myself reaching into this palette for festivals specifically, because it is so stunning. Um, they are really stunning. I just don't know if I would like reach for them over other things. I'm actually using festival on like the outer part of my lid today. Um, the only shades from this palette that I used, I tried to use both of the palettes in this look, but from Midsummer, I only used Lavender and Festival. Now my final thoughts on this palette. So I like the packaging, the price is really good. The color story is unique, even though it, like it is duping another palette, but I would say that this color story is like quite different. Like it's very like desert and the quality is nice, but I just don't see this being a staple palette in my collection. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes I look at I look at this palette and I'm like, you're nice, but I don't know if you're gonna be like, I don't know if I'm gonna be in a committed long-term relationship with you. So out of 10, I think I'd rate this a five out of 10. Like the, it's just, it's nice, but it's not something that I can see myself like really going back to, you know? And out of like, if we're giving it a grade system, I would grade this like a C. Again, not fantastic, but also not bad. I feel like this video is going to be so, so long. <laughs> right, now we're moving on to the Coastal palette right here. The packaging is so reflective. I'm going to try and not shine it too much on you. Now this is duping the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette, which is actually a palette that I was tempted to buy. <laughs> I had never tried Huda Beauty and I remember swatching like the shadows in boots and I was like, wow, these are so stunning. But then I looked at the price and I was like, no. I think the Huda palette is like 65 pounds. Like it's, I didn't realize how expensive her palettes were because I don't check for her stuff, but I was like, that's fucking expensive. So when Altigo was like, oh, we're going to send you the Coastal palette as well. I was like, yes. But anyways, this is an 18 pan palette with eight mattes and their shimmer breakdown is as follows. Four super sparkly shades, three smooth metallics, 
two marble shimmers and one weird gloss thing. <laughs> Those are the exact words that I wrote. It also retails for 22 US dollars, which is roughly 17 pounds 11. We're rounding it down to 17 pounds. It also has a really big mirror in there, which is lovely. Again, let's start things off by talking about the matte formula. Now this matte formula is very akin to the Midsummer palette. It is very silky, buildable, not too pigmented right off the bat, but it is nicely buildable. Again, they are quite powdery with fallout, but you can whisk that fallout away. Now, I I didn't find that there were any shades in this palette when I was vigorously testing it. I didn't find any of the shades in the palette to have like issues with like layering or wearing or blending like I found with one of the shades in Midsummer. But I did find that I think a few of these shades are a bit too similar. Again, I know this is duping out another colour story, like this isn't like their own colour story, but I'm just being honest, I think a few shades are a bit too similar, like Reef, Breeze, and Urchin. Like these are like, there's very minute differences. They look more different in the pan than they do on the eyes, but like there's not enough difference, you know? I prefer if one of those shades, like maybe like this shade, if it was swapped out for like another deep matte, maybe like a deep blue, that would be really stunning. Also, if I'm looking over here, I have a mirror right here so I can like also look at the palette. <laughs> but let's get on into the shimmer formula breakdown. So the first formula we're gonna talk about are the smooth metallics. And I found that those shadows were Starfish, Siren, and Abyss. This formula, very similar to the ones in Midsummer, they are a thicker formula and they're a smooth metallic finish. I did find that Abyss is the most sparkly out of the bunch, like it actually does have like silver like specks to it, which is really nice. However, the issues that I had with Glare in Midsummer appear here in Starfish. Like this shade, it's a bit shit. <laughs> it doesn't like to stick to the eye, even with glitter primer, it just lifts on itself. And again, the same thing with Midsummer. If you apply too much of these shades on top of a glitter primer, they can look a bit thick and chunky. So you do have to have like a thin layer of glitter primer and, you know, be careful when putting these shadows on. But I find that with smooth metallics anyway, regardless of like this brand or not, that's usually what happens. So I think it's just a testament to like the types of smooth metallics there are. Those three shades wear really well, except for Starfish. Starfish again is my enemy. Glare and Starfish. I'm a gla I'm glaring at the Starfish. Don't like you. All right, we're moving on to the marble shimmers. Now, technically there are three, but I only put two in this category and those are Shore and Glow. Now these are interesting. <laughs> they are a putty texture akin to the ColourPop Super Shocks, but spoiler alert, I fucking hate these ones. <laughs> they have a very sheer base with scattered sparkles to them and <sighs> Glow sucks. <laughs> this barely has a base color to it, but it's so dull. Like there's just nothing to it. Like, it's just, there's nothing. Like, I shove my fingy in there and swatch it and there's just, please focus, please. There's just not much. Like, I, like when you swatch it out, there's just nothing there. Like, what's that? It might be a really pretty, like, one and done shadow if you want to be able to get use out of it in the palette, but it's no. The shade, sure, that was a tongue twister, is a lot more sparkly, but it has that same issue where it just doesn't want to stick to my eyes, even like with or without a glitter primer. And it just kind of looks like nothing. It's just dull and doesn't exist. So yeah, I really dislike the marble shimmers in this. Technically this shade is also has like a marbled look to it, but it's a completely different formula to those marbled shimmers. And speaking of that formula, we are now going to talk about the super sparkly metallics. And those are pearl, Ripple, Sand, and Sparkle. This formula is drier, but really, really textured. It's not dry rough, it's more dry silky, if that makes sense. And all four of those shades are duochromes, except for the shade Sand. These are very sparkly, and to quote my notes exactly, fucking love this formula, oh my god. As you can see right here. Now, because these are super sparkly, they do work best with a glitter primer. I always just use a glitter primer anyway, because I find that like with my oily eyelids, it just makes, you know, sparkly shadows last. The sparkly level is on par with like Glaminatrix, Terra Moons, and Cleona. Obviously they are like strictly like sparkly duochromey topper shades, except for this shade Ripple. That one has a strong base color and sand. These two have a very big base color to them. A big base color, yeah, that's the correct term. <laughs> they wear very well. I do find you do have a little bit of like glitter fallout on your face throughout the day, um, but 
I don't really care about glitter fallout on my face. It just adds to the look. I also wrote 10 out of 10 slay and I wish Midsummer had this formula. I just think if Midsummer had these types of shimmers in it, it would take this palette to the next level, but it doesn't unfortunately. But I am so grateful that they're in this palette because the colors are also really stunning. Like I love that they have like a pinky blue, or like a neutrally, this is kind of akin to JD Glow, um, what is it called? JD Glow Unexpected. Sand is a beautiful taupey silver and Ripple is just such a beautiful deep deep like bluey purple. This formula is brilliant. I fucking love it. <laughs> the last formula we have to talk about is the Weird Gloss Goo. It is this shade called Coral. It's basically a lip gloss but for your eyes, like an eye gloss. Now despite that it's clear like a gloss but it's not really shiny. Like, it's just kind of like, like, can you tell that I really put it on my finger? It looks a bit like a lip balm. There's really not much shine to it at all. And even though it does have those like chunks in there of pigment, like sparkly pigment, I don't get any of that sparkle on my eyes. However, the way that I found to use this shade, cause I'll be honest, it looks kind of cool in the palette, doesn't it? Like it's kind of eye catching. It gives me the ick a little bit, but also intrigues me. I'm not too sure. I don't know why. It just does that to my brain. But the way that I found to use this shade, it's actually really nice to use as a base for the sparkly shades in this palette. So if you don't have like a glitter primer or anything, if you just put a thin layer of this and apply one of the sparklier shades on top of it, it does stick really well. And But I find if you apply too much of this, it will crease. But I feel like eye glosses are meant to be worn as like to make your eyes look moist to look wet wet but this just doesn't do that but it is a nice base for the sparkly shades now i did mostly use this palette on my eyes today so i'll zoom you in again so you can see so the shades i used from midsummer are this lavender shade in the in a portion of my crease and festival that sparkly shade on the outer part of my lid but the rest of it is from the coastal palette and this look is so pretty. I love brown and purple together. You can just see, like, I used the sparkly shades, like, on my inner corner and, like, this portion of the lid from Coastal, and it, they are just so wet looking, glossy and sparkly. So my final thoughts on the Coastal palette. Again, really nice packaging. I love the mirror. It is fucking huge. Price is good, and I really like this colour story a lot. I mean, like I said, I was, like, low-key eyeing up the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette, and I never ended up buying it, so I'm really glad that I actually have this colour story in my collection. It is really stunning. It is very good quality, and I love the sparkly shades. There are some misses in the palette, like I mentioned, with the marble shades, and I feel like that some of the mattes are a little bit too similar, but overall, I really enjoy this one, and I can see myself, like, going back to it and reaching for it. Like, I feel like this is gonna be, like, a long-term love in my collection. Like, I don't know if we'll get married. If I had to rate this palette out of 10, I was torn because I was like, as pretty as it is, you are kind of locked into this kind of mauvey, like purpley, like color story. There are some like cooler tone neutrals in here as well, and some warmth if you'd like to. Like it, it, it you are locked into it though. But with that being said, I out of ten, I'd rate this a seven point five out of ten. It was almost an eight out of ten, but. If the marble shades were different and if the clear like gloss thing was something different and one of the mattes, then it probably would be bumped up to an eight. And if I had to give it a grade, like in school, I would give it a B plus. But honestly, if you like this color story, I do not think you'll be disappointed in it. Like overall, I have really enjoyed Coastal. We are now going to talk about their matte liquid lipsticks. So these come in six shades. I have the shade Euphoria, which is like a pinky berry, Color. They retail for seven US dollars, which is five pounds forty-four. These have a dofa applicator right here, and this formula is very, very thin. Now they are a classic dry down matte liquid lipstick. They are transfer proof mostly. I think there's like a tiny bit of transfer um, if you apply it like fully, but right now I have it like applied on my inner portion of my lip and then blended it out, but there's nothing there. Nothing there, so you can smooch. 
You can smooch your pets without anything going everywhere. These do settle into the fine lines of your lips, so if that's something that you're not a big fan of, you might not enjoy this. They are really long lasting throughout the day and they're not that drying, I find. I mean, my lips don't get super crusty and dry. Um, I was a matte liquid lipstick connoisseur like for years. Like those used to be like my bread and butter. Nowadays, not so much, um, but this is a good formula and it is quite lightweight on the lips. Now, in all honesty, I don't often wear matte liquid lipsticks anymore. I'm more of a bullet lipstick person or if it's gonna be a liquid lipstick, it has to be something like the Kaleidos Lip Clays, but this formula is really good. <laughs> like I definitely will keep this around in my collection because I like the color and you can blot it out. I mean, clearly like you can see. I did like manage to have it nice and blended. And the final product we're gonna be reviewing um, are the lashes. Now I'm clearly wearing them today and I've only worn them twice. So this isn't gonna be a super thorough review. It feels weird holding an empty box, but <laughs> like I'm wearing them on my eyes. They retail for seven US dollars, which again is like 544 pounds and they have eight styles. Now mine allegedly is in the style called Velvet. Now, I could not find that style on their website anywhere. So I think these might be the style Amour. They look like that style. Since we're talking about lashes, I may as well just zoom you in real close. Hello. They have a clear lash band, which is quite nice if you like a more natural look. And they are vegan lashes, like they're cruelty-free, like synthetic hair. And they were really easy to apply. They're flexible, but not too, too flexible. And I've only worn them twice, so I can't tell you if they were like rip or anything. <laughs> I think this style is really natural and nice. I think I applied that one a bit wonky. Don't look at that one. The actual quality of the lash is really, really nice, especially for like, what, £5.50? I'm gonna round it up. £5.50, like that is really cheap for lashes. And if you are like dipping your toes into lashes, then I think this is a good thing to like try out. They look really nice. They're not very like... They don't look super synthetic, you know what I mean? I've worn lashes that are cheap that just look really like plasticky and just not nice and fluffy on your eyes, but these are nice. Now, I'll be honest, this isn't a style that I would go for usually. This is quite natural, in my opinion. Now, I know these lashes are probably not natural to like anybody else, but like for me, my favorite lashes are from Blend Bunny and they are the Saint lashes put a picture right here and they are spiky. I like spiky lashes. <laughs> and if I go for fluttery like this, I prefer to use half lashes, but to be honest, I'll just probably cut these in half and use them as half lashes. And it's good to have a nice little natural style in your collection every, every so often. So that my friends concludes my brand review on Alter Ego. I feel like we've been sat here for such a long time but do let me know if this review was helpful. I used to do like indie brand showcases where I would review like one of everything from a brand, but like that very quickly could not happen anymore because I simply just do not have everything. <laughs> but anyways, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do let me know, have you tried Alter Ego before? Have you, what are your thoughts on their palettes and their other products? Like I said, I am really, really impressed with Coastal specifically, like this, is like a standout queen. Like I really love her. Midsummer 2 is pretty, it's just, you know, I prefer Coastal out of the two, but it is nice. I'll keep it bopping about. If you'd like to see more makeup content from me, then you can follow me on my Instagram. It's Fairy Sky right here. I post all my looks there and I'm active on there every single day. And if you'd like to support me further, I do have my own small business, Rain Cloud Candles Co. We are a small queer owned business based in the UK and we make handmade candles and wax melts like this beautiful one, Trans Euphoria. Probably the prettiest candle I've ever made in my life. So cute. The link to shop will be down below along with our social media if you'd like to support us. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you here. And as always, stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.